Hey everybody, Engineer Coffee, welcome to the moon. Got something a little bit different this week. I wasn't able to record for Martian Engineering. Uh, got a cold, you can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit, so I wasn't able to get enough recorded. But I still wanted to get something out there because we just passed 5,000 subscribers, so thank you. So right now we're doing a community build project on our Discord and I built an elevator in it and I wanted to recreate that here on the moon and kind of go through the programming that I did for it because it turned out pretty cool. So here we got this elevator building. Let's go ahead and call the elevator to us. A little bit hard to see, but you can see that light number two is on and then it'll blink light number one when it gets up to us. There we go. Nice little open platform elevator. Let's go ahead and head down to level five and we'll see it in operation. Ramp comes up, doors close, and then we slowly start descending with our lovely elevator music. And here we are coming to level five. Ramp should drop down and the doors will open. There we are. All right, to celebrate 5,000 subs, Keen was kind enough to give me some Steam keys. So I've got five for Space Engineers 1 and one for Space Engineers 2. So I'll put a Google form in the description below uh, for entry for that. I'm going to try to make it a little bit fair where you guys can enter in for just Space Engineers 2. I'm sure there's a lot of people that watch this that already have Space Engineers, uh, but uh, I'll try to make it as fair as possible and chosen at random. All the details and stuff will be in that Google form. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started on how we built this elevator. All right, so here we got the elevator set up. I've got lights across the top to show what level the elevator is currently at. Uh, we got our button panel to operate it, and then we've got our gate. And inside here, we've got a giant shaft with five different levels. Uh, no elevator yet. Let's go ahead and get that built. All right, let's go ahead and get started building an elevator down here at the base. So we'll put it up a block here and then get a piston. And I could, you know, dig down to the ground and stack a whole bunch of pistons on top of each other, but I'd like to leave it a little bit more compact and we have all of this room to work with so let's go ahead and take advantage of it. I'm going to use blast doors just because they can slide against each other and not have any interference which is always nice. Go ahead and bring those two down like that and then we'll go back to our curved ones and then we'll put another piston on top of that and we'll just keep going with this process until we get uh, enough of them placed in here. There's definitely multiple ways to do this type of setup. You can do it with uh, different blocks. You can do a piston facing downward that's extended uh, that retracts to get it even taller. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way so they are all uh, pointing upward. So then we have to extend them all at the same rate to get to the level that we wanna get to. All right, there we go. There's my setup. I've got six different pistons. Like I said, I could have just buried them all on the ground and call it a day, but uh, it's kind of a nice way to make it a little bit compact. Um, use up the space. So I did this on the uh, community build because it's a spaceship and you obviously can't dig down into the ground to go further. You got so much limited space. So that works there. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a subgrid out of it because I always do. Let's go ahead and put a hinge here and then we'll uh, put on a medium head. All right, there we go. We've got a hinge with a medium head on top of it. Let's just go ahead and create a little panel right here. Come on. There we go. Uh, and then we'll build the elevator on top of that just so it clears all of these... Uh, armor panels, which I think it will. Yes. Uh, let's just come out to there for now. All right, so I went in here to the pistons and I adjusted the minimum distance. So we're level with level five here. And it turned out to be uh, 0.176 is a good value here that we are pretty much flush with the deck. I'm gonna call that a win. So there is our starting value. And then every other floor, we're just gonna go up one, two, three, four, two and a half meter blocks, so that's 10 meters. So we just need to add 10 meters divided by six to each one of our floor levels for these piston distances. So that's pretty easy. All right, so I've got my piston distances for each floor level. Uh, basically just figured out the bottom level here, kind of through trial and error. Uh, there is an offset with pistons. For those that didn't know, these aren't exactly too tall. Uh, if I put it on here and here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, that if I put this block on there, there's just an ever so slight gap. It's a little hard to see with the full block there because of the edges, but let's go ahead and use a interior block. There we go. Now you can really see the gap in there. Uh, that distance is actually 0.16. And so I have a 0.16 plus or times six because I have six pistons of stack tolerance that built up uh, that I needed to account for. So you can do the math precisely, but then it gets kind of close. Uh, and then I went ahead and adjusted it. Anyway, after that is done, we've got our point 176. I just need to add 10 meters to it because we're going to go up one, two, three, four blocks. These are two and a half meters tall. So that's 10 meters total. I have six pistons. So 10 divided by six is 1.66 repeating. Uh, so I just need to add that to each level as we go up. So each one of these numbers is just 1.66 more than the next one. 
So pretty easy. Uh, I just went ahead and recorded the values here so we have them when we do the programming later. All right, let's go ahead and build a little bit more on this elevator. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little railing on our elevator here before Lunar OSHA shows up. All right, and since we got this sci-fi theme going on, let's go ahead and continue it with some neon lights. Uh, let's grab that orange color. All right, there we go, I like it. Let's go ahead and get some hinges on here now. I wanna create a ramp. Face down for the negative seems like the most appropriate. All right, let's get a hinge part on this one. And then we'll attach it. There we go. And we'll put these blocks in there like that. Uh, and then we might need to take these guys out. And we'll put in this. Uh, looks like we have a block down there. Let's flip it up and over. There we go. Uh, let's make sure we do that to the other side here. All right, there we go. A couple little ramps with the uh, caution on there. I think that'll be good. Uh, let's go ahead and find those hinges. All right, we've got all four of those hinges. Let's go ahead and save it as a group. Let's put a positive velocity on it. And of course, they're not moving. What did I do wrong? All right, there we go. I got it fixed. Uh, it turns out when I was doing the mirror, it uh, felt like flipping those hinges over. So some of them were negative, some were positive. So I went ahead and just deleted them. So they're all going the right direction. All right, let's set their lower limit to zero. And then we'll give it a reverse. There we go. Now they'll come down and be even with the deck. That's all good. All right, I think we've got the elevator physically built. Uh, now we need to get some programming done. So let's go ahead and get some buttons going. We're gonna need five, one for each floor. Let's just go ahead and put them around here. Okay, there we go, we got our five buttons. Uh, let's go ahead and get some programming done. All right, so the programming for this is going to be fairly simple. I think we only need about eight timers and two event controllers, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the timers here in the floor so it's easy to see and see them trigger as we do this process. Uh, so we're gonna need one to close the doors uh, before we start the elevator process. We're gonna need another five. All right, and then we got another five timers, one for each floor. So if you got a different elevator with different floors, then count that one accordingly. All right, we've got two event controllers that feeds into a timer and that timer will feed into another timer, uh, which will start to make sense once we get it all set up. All right, so I've got my timers here labeled zero to seven. We'll start at zero, so then we have one for floor number one, floor two, three, and four, just to make it easy. All right, well, I went ahead and brought us up here to level one so we can have an initial condition. The ramp will be down, the doors will be open, and we can come here on to the elevator. All right, for our first timer here, we're gonna do a, t a delay of one second for timer zero. And we're gonna go into the setup actions. We wanna close our doors, or our gates. I made a group of all of the elevator gates. We're gonna go ahead and make sure they're all closed. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about what floor we're on. We're just gonna close them all. All right, and the next thing we need to do is we need to retract this ramp back up. So we're just gonna do a quick reverse on them. I could do it explicitly and do a set velocity, uh, but reverse should work. All right, and I added a couple warning lights here on the edges, just so we know when the elevator is going to ramp up here so we're clear of the area and the door is going to close. Uh, I also got a couple more up here that will turn on as well. We'll make sure those are all off right now. And then in our timer, and in our timer zero, we're going to go ahead and turn those warning lights on. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do for timer one through five, we need to figure out the delay here. And the delay is pretty much going to be however long it takes to close this door. Uh, we're pretty much speed dependent on that. We can adjust the hinge here to be as fast as we want, but uh, this is going to take the time it's going to take. All right, so it takes about five seconds to close those gates. So we're gonna go ahead and get a delay of six here because we've got a one second delay before it actually closes the door uh, before these guys will go. All right, I added one more thing as well. We've got a sound block here to play the elevator music when we operate because it's gotta have elevator music. Okay, so for timer number one, what we need to do is we need to turn off our doors. We're gonna go in here to set up actions. We're gonna find all of our gates and we're gonna turn them all off. We're also going to turn off our warning lights because the gates will be up at that point, so we can turn them back off. We will play our elevator sound block. All right, the next thing we do is we're going to take our group of pistons here. We're going to do a set and move, and we're going to do the value that we have, the 0.426. And a speed of 0.25 was pretty appropriate. All right, and then the last thing we need to do, because we turn all the gates off, we just want to turn on number one. We're going to find both of our gates for level one, and we'll turn them on. And that's it. And we'll do the same thing for the other four timers here for each level. All right, so again, here in number two, we're gonna turn all of our gates off. I'm gonna turn off our warning lights. We're gonna play our sound block. All right, we're gonna do a set and move on our pistons. This one is going to be 5.176. Speed of 0.25 was good. Then the last thing, we need to find our gate number two, and we're gonna turn both of them on. 
All right, let me go through and set up the other three. All right, there we go. I've got all five timers set up. It turns off the gates, turns off the warning lights, plays the elevator music, moves the pistons to the right location, turns on the door level that you're going to, and uh, then it's done. So now what we need to do is we need to set up our buttons here. Uh, when we do this, we want to play both the zero and the level that it's going to. So in order to do that, I could create another timer that groups both of them together. But I'm going to go ahead and just make a group. I'm just going to call it elevator floor one. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that so we can use it later. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing here for two. Zero and three will go for level three. Zero and four for level four. Zero and five for level five. So now when we're here, we can just go to floor and we can find our group. And then we're gonna do a start here on our group for floor number one, and we'll keep doing that here for the rest of them. Start and start. There we go. Now I've got all five buttons set up. I'll have to do it on the other four ends here, or the other three ends. Uh, but if I were to hit floor number two, it's going to play both of them. So this guy goes up, the door is closing. Now we have the elevator music, it's going down. Okay, and here we are at level two and our music continues to play. Our gates are not down because we haven't set any of that up. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to get our ramps down to the level and open those doors. And so in order to do that, we're gonna use the event controllers because there's a little quirk with the pistons that I kind of want to show off. All right, so if we look at a piston here, we'll notice it's at 5.2 meters. And when we do a set and move, it changes either the minimum distance or the maximum distance to that value, depending on which direction you're coming from. Uh, so we were going from level one at 6.8 and we went down to level two to 5.2. So it reset our minimum distance. And so we can use that to our advantage in the event controller. So let's come up here to our event controller. We're gonna name this one for piston at 0%. We're going to use our piston position percentage. We're going to use equal to or less than 0%. And what you'll notice is if we add all six of these pistons in here, we'll do the AND gate as well. Uh, you'll notice, I think this might be a build info thing. I don't think this is vanilla, but you'll notice that each one of these is actually at 0%. So even though it's at 5.2 meters, it's at the new minimum. And so every time we do a new set and move, like if we were to pick level five, uh, looking at the background here, we have 0.176, that will be the new 0%. So we're going to use that to our advantage. So the next one here we want to have as our piston at 100%. And this is basically if we're coming from a lower position up to a higher position, we want to know when it reaches the peak rather than the valley. So for this one, piston position percentage, again, we're going to do equal to or greater than, and we're going to do 100%. We're going to pick all of our pistons, add them in there, put the AND gate on, and you'll notice here that they're 0%. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just turn on and off both of these uh, event controllers after we got them set up. I've noticed sometimes they have issues that they um, either detect or they don't. Um, turning them off and on again uh, seems to fix that and they reset what they're supposed to be looking at. All right, so now if we just go in here and manually reverse these pistons, when it gets up here to the top, we should see one of these click over to blue. Don't know which exactly one was number one and which one was number two when I named them. Mm -hmm. Interesting, it's not working. Let's go ahead and give a little bit of a buffer in here. Sometimes it has a little bit of a issue. It should be equal to, but sometimes that equal to doesn't work. Uh, we basically want to trick it into getting over 100%. So we're going to pick 99 and we'll pick 1% and see if that helps. All right, well, these are really not wanting to trigger and I'm wondering it's because it doesn't have an action to actually do. Uh, so let's go ahead and go in and find our other timers. All right, I went ahead and labeled the uh, timers here. So we want timer number six. We're going to have that to open the doors. Uh, we don't want a delay in there on at all, which is fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop the music will be one of the things that we do as well. But here for the gates, we just want to open them up. We want to find our ramp and we want to reverse those as well. We're going to go ahead and turn on our warning lights again. We're going to go ahead and stop our elevator music. All right, and then the last thing the timer is going to do is just going to go ahead and start timer number seven. And then timer number seven here, we're just going to have a five second delay for those doors to open. And then all we're going to do is turn off the warning lights. Uh, there could be other stuff that we want to add in the future. So I just wanted to have this expansion uh, here. Um, I was hoping to have a sound that was kind of like an elevator ding that we reached the floor level, but uh, I haven't really found anything that I liked for that. That's uh, the vanilla sound. All right, so let's go back into our event controllers here and we'll select an action and it's going to go ahead and trigger that timer number six. I'm going to go ahead and do a trigger now on the open door sequence. Same for the 100%. That should be it. Let's go ahead and press number two here and see if we can get this guy to work. Okay, there we go. That worked, but it did not reverse our hinges. 
All right, I think I've got it figured out what the issue was. It was the share inertial tensors on that first piston. So I've got it taken off and I bumped up the kilonewton. So let's go ahead and give this another test here. Let's go to floor three this time. Ramp is coming up. Doors are closing. Now we got our elevator music and we'll travel on down. There we go, we hit level three. The sensor detected it, our timers went on. Ramp goes down, doors open. Again, I don't have anything on level three. All right, now we want to get a way to indicate what level the elevator is on. So we've got these indicator lights up here. We can put them wherever we want. I just went ahead and put up here as an example. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use sensors for that. Make it nice and easy. All right, well, of course, I can't place it there because the elevator is in the way, but we'll go ahead and get the other ones going. All right, so the sensors, this up sensor is actually this way. There's a little white arrow there on the top. Same with these guys. It's a little bit harder to see, but there is up arrows right there to show what is the up direction. Uh, let's just go ahead and place these. Let's make them gray so they kind of blend in. Let's go ahead and bring the elevator down to floor number two so we can get this guy placed. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and grab all of them. All right, here in info, I have show sensor field range. We'll go back to our control panel and we'll show them on the HUD. Uh, let's just go ahead and bring in all of these sides for now. The front will work on the extension. We want to go ahead and turn off the audible. Uh, we're not wanting to detect player. We want to do sub grids. Uh, let's do a front extension of two because that looks like it's still going to trigger the floor. And now we just want to bring up our top and bottom heights so it actually gets triggered. Uh, and we want it to kind of extend a little bit up and down anyway, so then it still leaves the light on as the elevator is traveling. So let's try an extension of two on the top and the bottom. All right, and then our, for our set of actions, I'm only going to do the one set of lights, but we could have a group. Um, we're going to just do our indicator lights for sensor number one. We're going to do our indicator number one. We're just going to turn it on and off when we're in range and do that for all the sensors. All right, let's go ahead and give that a little test here. Let's go up to level one. Uh, we can get rid of this screen. We already have all the values set. Let's get him out of our way. I just noticed these are missing. Should have little corners that go in set like this. All right, now that we're up here at level one, there we go. Light number one is lit up. Now let's go ahead and just press the button and go to level three. We'll stand outside here and see how it looks. Again, it should stay in range as it's traveling. That actually feels pretty good there. We could adjust it so there's a little bit less gap between them as they switch between levels, but uh, I like that. Okay, and then here on our button panel, we have the uh, group for the floor one. We'll go ahead and trigger that group. There we go, the lights are blinking. Now we should see the levels go from there. There we go, level three to two, back up here to level one. All right, there we go. That is a working elevator. We could put indicator lights on each floor level. We could put them here on the elevator itself. Uh, this is an open canopy one, so I didn't worry about it. But uh, now we can go all the way down to level five and listen to some awesome elevator music as we do it. All right, I just wanted to thank everybody again for their support. Make sure you're into the giveaway down below. Otherwise, we will see you back on Mars.